Chaz Marler from Paradise Paradise here, and when a board game reviewer, such as what I pretend to be, pensively produces and publicly proclaims an opinion on a product, one thing that is critically important for the reviewer to do is to retain their objectivity by judging the game not on what they want it to be, but if the game itself attains the objectives that it was designed to achieve. For example, the collectible deck-building dice-fighting game Star Wars Destiny by Fantasy Flight Games strives to combine dice-driven combat and faction-driven hand management with straightforward rules in order to provide a game that is easy to learn, but also enables deep strategic thinking and clever deck building. At least that's what their marketing pamphlet tells me. But let's find out if I share this pamphlet's opinion about the game as we take a look at the big idea behind Star Wars Destiny, followed by my thoughts on the game. Star Wars Destiny is a collectible dice and card game designed for two to four players. And right now, this game is hot. Sizzling, sizzling hot. Starters and boosters are sold out all over town, all over the nation, and four out of five gamers that I know have given in and succumbed to the dark side and bought enough cards and dice to play this game. Eddie, stay strong. In the game, players will bring a collection of hand-picked characters and their own custom-built 30-card decks to the battlefield. The characters and the cards played from their deck will perform special abilities and add dice to their available dice pool, which will, in turn, inflict damage on their opponent's characters and perform more special abilities. When a player loses all of their characters or runs out of cards in both their deck and hand, they are eliminated from the game. The last player standing wins. Oh, and the cards and dice are designed with a Star Wars theme, which may be slightly important later. Many of the standard CCG core concepts that have been introduced in previous games, like Magic the Gathering, are present in Star Wars Destiny. For example, characters that have the capability to inflict and take damage, uh, using cards by exhausting or tapping them, Cards that come in a variety of colors, which add restrictions to deck construction and add synergy to certain card combinations. Support cards that are played on the table, similar to global enchantments. Cards that can have upgrades played on them, like local enchantments. But, but these core features quickly veer off into something unique. There is a shared battlefield with a special ability that will change ownership over the course of the game. The currency that is earned accumulates from round to round. And of course, there's the big, chunky, colorful dice that are used to generate actions, currency, and damage throughout the game. Plus the fact that players only play cards on their own turn. Never play cards in reaction to actions taken during an opponent's turn. And, and this is important because the way in which the actions play out in the game is the primary problem that I have with the game. Uh, players have a variety of choices available to them, such as playing a card from their hand, activating a character or support card that they've played on the table, resolving one or more of a specific type of dice that they've rolled, discarding a card from their hand to re-roll one or more of their dice, using an action available that's on a card, the ever-popular passing your turn, or exiting the round by claiming the battlefield. And that's it. There's a simple list of seven things to do to choose from. And on their turn, a player selects one of those actions and does it as their turn. Play a card from my hand, boom, that's a turn. Exhaust this card to roll its dice, boom, that's a turn. Shuffle my and my opponent's decks together and redistribute them, no. That's not an option. Use a dice that I've rolled earlier on my turn to use its ability. Boom. That actually is another thing that you can really, really do. And that's neat. This simple action system usually keeps the game moving quickly. But the problem that I've experienced is that it always feels like I'm doing half of something on my turns. Like I'm in a constant state of hitting the pause button while trying to accomplish a simple objective. 
All right, I want to blow you up. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap this guy to roll some dice in order to get some blow you up points. Now I'm going to use the, oh, that's right. I just, I, I, I stopped right there. Okay. Uh, I, I just, I just rolled a bunch of, okay. W what was that you just did on your turn? Oh, you played a card that removed all of my dice that I was about to blow you up with? Oh no, that, that, that's cool. I, I'll just tap this card to roll its dice and, uh, I guess now I'm done, so now you're done now. Okay, so now I guess I'll just uh, discard this card to re-roll the dice that I just rolled to actually get the result that I need. All right, now that is what I needed, which I'll I'll use just after your turn. Oh, I, you just blew up my guy, so now I don't have that dice anymore. No, that's okay, I'll, I'll just play this card. That will give me another dice that I can roll on my next turn. And then I'll wait to resolve its result, whatever it was, because at this point I've pretty much lost my uh, will to live. My experience playing this game has felt like the way George Carlin used to describe driving through all the toll booths in New Jersey. I can't get anywhere because I'm in a constant state of slowing down. But that gripe is based on my own personal subjective experiences with the gameplay which admittedly can vary even for me from game to game. So I don't, I don't think that that issue alone is enough of a foundation for me to build my entire opinion of the game upon. But don't worry, I have more complaints. And one that I think is valid is the fact that in the starter packs for this game of 30 card deck combat, Fantasy Flight Games provides player with decks containing 20 cards. Why? Is it because new players would be overwhelmed by trying to master the infinite array of possibilities that a standard 30 card deck would offer? Are slimmer 20 card decks provided in the starter sets because, because that's all the new players can handle? Or is it because starter packs are designed to simply give us a taste of the game. So then we rush out and purchase booster pack after booster pack after booster pack in order con to construct complete decks. I gotta tell you, neither one of those scenarios puts FFG in a flattering light. Uh, look, look, if you're gonna introduce me to a game that uses 30 card decks, give me at least 30 cards to work with when I purchase a starter to start using the game. Allow me to put it this way. When I go to a matinee, I'm not there because I expect to be shown 65% of a movie. I am there because my boss is out of town that day, so I'm skipping out on work. I made the investment of my time and money, so give me the full experience before I bump into him in the lobby after the show. And the need to buy into boosters just to build your first full deck brings me to my third personal problem with the game the collectible nature of its CCG business model. Really? Not only do I need to go out and buy more cards just to play the full version of the game, now I gotta purchase those cards randomly and chase after the ones that I really want in the secondary market? Thanks! Thanks for that! I don't know. Uh, perhaps it's the other recent collectible games that withered quickly in my area, such as Marvel Dice Masters or the recent quality LCG games, such as the Arkham Horror card game, in which all the cards in all the sets that you need are provided in every purchase of the game. But for some reason, the prospect of taking the plunge into a new CCG gaming environment just, just doesn't provide the excitement that it once did. One booster pack, please. Oh, oh I didn't get any of the cards I need. Still, that was a very thrilling experience. Overall, I sincerely hope that the Star Wars license isn't the actual reason restocks of this game are selling out literally within hours all over the country. I hope that a year from now, there's still enthusiasm for this game and boosters are being purchased hand over fist. And I hope that my gut feeling that tells me that neither of those things are actually true is wrong. But still, that's my own subjective point of view. What about the question of whether the game itself attains the objectives that it was designed to achieve? 
Does this game combine dice-driven combat and faction-driven hand management with straightforward rules in order to provide a game that is easy to learn, but also enables deep strategic thinking and clever deck building? Yeah, it does. And it does so in a way that's built on established gaming principles while still adding several unique new elements to it. So. Yeah, in that respect, Star Wars Destiny is a quality designed game with a lot of potential. It's just not one that I've enjoyed playing yet. And even so, I'm not sure I want to invest the time and the resources into chasing the dice and cards that would be necessary to become fully invested in this game's experience. The Force may be with Star Wars Destiny, so far, I've had to force myself to enjoy it. So, now it's your turn. How wrong is my opinion on Star Wars Destiny? Somewhat wrong? Or so very incredibly wrong? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And regardless, I hope that this overview has been helpful. And for more board game news and reviews and commentary, be sure to subscribe to both the Pair of Dice Paradise and the Dice Tower YouTube channels. And follow us on Facebook and Twitter for more board game conversations as well. In the meantime, I've been the oh-so-very-wrong Chaz Marler from Pair of Dice Paradise. <laughs> Take care. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Well, let's find out if I share this pamphlet's opinion, as well as my big idea is to do this right. The characters and cards that are played from their deck will scroll the script away. Uh, for example, characters that have the capability... Well, that was thrilling.